6.30, and it's June 25th, and this is a special meeting of the Wayne Westland Board of Education. Your attendance tonight uh, shows your support for public education. Um, item 290.15, Pledge of the Alleg Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag. Uh, Ms. Bull, would you do that please? <coughs> Pleasure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item 291.15, roll call attendance, Mrs. Medell. Mr. Griffin. Present. Ooh, that hurt. <laughs> Mrs. Walker. Present. Dr. Weaver. Present. Mrs. Hines. Present. Mrs. Madison. Present. I'm here, and Mr. Buckaloo. I am also here. Thank you. Citizen comments, agenda items only, Mrs. Medell. I'm not seeing any hands. <laughs> Nor do I. <laughs> Moving on, uh, item 293.15, review and approval, human resource items, Mrs. Bowl. Yes, thank you, Mr. President, and good evening. Um, tonight, I have the pleasure of recommending for your consideration the approval of Ms. Nancy Ely to the Director of the Preschool Education Programs at Stylemeyer Early Childhood Center. Ms. Ely has 13 years of experience in this capacity with the Farmington Public Schools. Prior to her administrative position, Mrs. Ely served as a sixth grade classroom teacher and also as an early childhood special education teacher. Uh, Ms. Ely has a Bachelor of Science from Western Michigan University, a Master of Education from Grand Valley State University, and an Ed Specialist degree from Kent State University. Um, Ms. Ely was not able to join us tonight. Her daughter's getting married on the west side of the state tomorrow. <laughs> okay. A motion is in order. So move. Support. Okay, motion by Mrs. Walker and second by Mrs. Madison. Any discussion? I'm just glad we have closure <laughs> and we can move forward for the new school year. Anyone else? Okay, uh, Mrs. Uh, Medell, would you uh, take a roll call vote, please? Dr. Weaver? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mrs. Madison? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mrs. Hines? Yes. I vote yes, and Mr. Buckaloo? Yes. And that gives us a 7 0 vote. Thank Congratulations you. Congratulations to Mrs. Ely. And that takes us to item 294.15, review and approval business service items and finance items. Mr. Lushenscheidler. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. Um, in your yellow book, the um, amendments to 1415, if you could turn to page one. Okay, overall, the, e, the general fund went from a budgeted in the middle there from a uh, surplus of about 61000 to a amended deficit of $419,000. Uh, I'm going to review the revenues and expenditures with you and uh, to provide the detail. You have a summary of the revenues down at the bottom of the page there on one. Uh, local tax decrease of uh, 567 518 this is due to $288,000 in delinquencies of our summer 2015 collections a uh, $50,000 assessment decrease uh, this will be reflected in our next year's um, state aid because if we don't receive it through our local taxes due to decreases we'll receive it on our foundation and there's a graph later that I'll show you uh, the remainder of the decrease is due to an uh, assessment decrease throughout the year. Uh, this increased our state aid, and you'll see the reflection when we go to the detail. Um, Act 18 is a decrease of 437,924. Um, this is the original budget 
or revenues were based on a budget that was sent to RESA. Our actual, at the end of the year, it was sent in and it represented a reduction of about $400,000. Uh, MIPSERS 147D, uh, we have discussed this before, uh, actually in Finance Committee. This was a mid-year reduction elimination by the governor. Uh, we were originally going to receive approximately $1 million. Uh, we collected $174,000 before the elimination. Um, on the other side of this, our retirement rate decreased from 34.54 down to 33.41 throughout the year. Um, and then the other large item here of 475.252 is special education. This is funding that we received from the state. This is actually a prior year adjustment. You. The state will come back, receive actuals, and then they will do adjustments from the prior year. And this is what we received in the spring of this year. Any questions on revenues? Nope. Okay. Uh, turn the page, please, to uh, page two. Um, I'll go over uh, the summary of the adjustments. Um, Decrease of expenditures overall of $1.4 million. Um, salaries reduced by almost $700,000. This was primarily special education. Uh, benefits overall increased by 335, and this was due to ret retirement uh, adjustments. Uh, purchase services decreased by 537, 473. This was uh, at the end of the year, we did a priority-based budgeting, um, and we cut off year-end spending um, early June. Um, and $100,000 of this came from Ed Services, based on looking at things that they need to purchase versus um, what their budget was. And almost $350,000 is from buildings and grounds. And in the supplies and capital, decreased by 426222 Again, this was due to priority-based budgeting at the end of the year, cut off of purchasing, and we um, are budgeting a different way. We're allowing buildings to carry over their supply budgets. Um, you know, it's uh, sort of a philosophy that if you have a budget at the end of the year, we don't want you to go out and spend it and then let things sit there throughout the summer. Um, we'd rather have uh, the staff or the principal purchase throughout the year the things that they need and then budget for the next year. Buildings are doing priority-based budgeting for next year. Um, and I would say the principals have been doing a very good job. Uh, Ed Services, priority-based budgeting for next year. B&G and Transportation, those were sort of pilots. And we'll go through tr more training next year. Uh, B&G supplies and capital decreased by $220,000, and transportation was able to be decreased by $131,000. And um, I'll go over a little bit of that in the next, or actually in next year's budget. Uh, surprisingly, gas decreased. Uh, we spent about $600,000 in gas. It decreased by about a third, so we're able to save a lot of money that way. Uh, utilities decrease of $43,000. This is primarily due to the demolition of the buildings. Um, the board approved this in December. We cut off all utilities the day after and were able to save on the budget there. <coughs> um, overall, if the budgeted $419,000 deficit is our ending operations for 1415, our beginning fund balance of $3.7 million will be reduced to $3.3 million or 3% of our fund balance. Uh, board policy states a goal of 5% fund balance. Going on to page 4 and 5, um, provide a little bit more detail as you go through the book. You get more detail. Um, this compares our uh, June amendment to the January amendment, and you can see where um, I've described the increases or decreases, and the same with the, um, just gives you a little more detail on the expenditures by area, program, and it comes down to our ending fund balance of almost $3.3 million. Any questions on any of these? I'll go into a little bit more detail. 
Well, the questions that I had asked you prior to the meeting, you also included in your presentation just now. Oh, okay. Good. I'm glad I could help you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, on page six, um, I just point out a graph of our ending fund balances. This goes from uh, fiscal 94-95, where we had actually a deficit of almost $2 million through uh, budgeted at the end of this year, where we have a $3.3 million. Uh, you can see where uh, we've had events where we've lost Wayne West on language, we've closed buildings, you can see the spikes and decreases in fund balance. Um, page seven is just a little bit more detail. I've already explained on the revenue adjustments. Page eight through 10 represent the areas of increase or decrease by program area. Um, I've already discussed the large ones, um, and this is, was basically in added needs or special education. And then page 13 provides more detail of the revenue items. Um, I don't know if you want me to go down through any of these or if you have any questions on any of the summary. No? Okay. Well, the only question I had asked earlier was about adult education and yes. about robotics, but you had answered that, that about funding of those programs. Yes, uh, they actually moved to a, um, to a grant to be able to track them separately. Okay, um, then 14 and 15 gives you even more detail, <laughs> numbers-wise, if you want that. And pages 17 through 22 are non-general fund budgets. You have the debt fund budget, which you approved the levy at your June 8th meeting, uh, special education fund budget, federal, state, local grant programs, uh, milk and lunch budget, sinking fund, and the five-year maintenance capital projects fund budget, which I would uh, point out that is eliminated at the end of this year. We transferred the 404000 into the general fund, and you would see that in a transfer. Are there any questions? Um, are you through with this budget now, or will you receive additional numbers as the summer goes on? Um, you know, actually, there is a what's called a measurement period for um, reporting. And that goes July and August. So if we receive any invoices that were for products or services received prior to June 30th, we'll have to pay them in the next year, but we'll expense them in the current year. And that goes for revenues also. We'll accrue revenues. Anything for, um, for example, teachers, we pay on 26 pays. Um, so what happens is their contract starts uh, September 1st, and they work through June, and then we pay them through the summer. We have to back all the pay, all the insurance up to reflect that the services were received in that year. So uh, we've already booked all of the uh, retirement for the summer. Uh, the only thing we have to book is the um, insurance for staff that are either 44 a week or teachers for July and August, and then also we have an accrual for the last payroll for hourly people. So there, there are more things to be done. Um, we also will receive some revenue, um, so we don't have exact numbers. This is a budgeted number based on what we know. Um, by the board allowing us to come back on the 25th, we're able to get much more information. Um, so you have pretty accurate numbers at this point. I do expect some variations, hopefully positive. We lost some state revenue on 147D. Yes. Is, does that mean that we also lost some, um, the need to spend that much money as well? We were able to reduce some of the retirement. Uh, it was about that one, about 1.1%. Uh, but we also had, with the 147C, it's a, uh, that's another. Oh, yeah another MIPSERS retirement that we receive. You receive that based on prior year's payroll. And based on our payroll being less this year, we actually have to send back more. We have to send back everything that we received from the state. 
So okay. the state is flowing it through the district. <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay, and we're coming up with less than a 5% <coughs> fund equity. Yes. Uh, that's going to require us to do additional reporting to the state, is it? Uh, I think Dr. Harmel is going to talk about that when okay. it gets to I'll the superintendent's uh, portion. I'll wait then. Does anyone else have a question? You know what, I'm, we kind of got ahead of ourselves here. Um, I'd like to hear a motion to accept this. So move support. Okay, and it's with Mrs. Walker and Mrs. Madison for support. And this, at this point, we should be doing our discussion. Oh. Is there anyone else that has a question or comment? I see none. Mrs. Medell, roll call vote, please. Okay, Mrs. Madison? Yes. Mrs. Hines? Yes. Dr. Weaver? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. I vote yes, and Mr. Buckaloo? I also vote yes, and that gives us seven <laughs> yes votes. And brings us to item B uh, again, uh, Mr. Larson Scheidler, budget hearing. All right. Thank you, uh, President Bucklew. Um, again, going to your green books now. If you could turn to page one. And uh, our operating budget or general fund budget is based on maintaining full program choices available for our students as in the current year 2014-15. Uh, if you turn to page three. Uh, page three provides an overview of the beginning fund balance, the revenues, expenditures, and ending fund balance. Uh, as compared to the 2014-15 amended budget that we just discussed. Um, revenues are based on uh, FTE reduction of 286 students, um, but it's actually 276 due to a change in the School Aid Act. I'll discuss this on page 16 once we get to the detail. Um, the 2015-16 School Aid is will fund the district at $7,391 per pupil, which is an increase of $140 per pupil from our 2014-15 amount of $7,251. Uh, it is important to know that uh, the district is still funded at the lowest foundation rate in the state. Um, we're in company with about 300 other districts at that level. Um, Categorical funding items were eliminated. The way this affects the district is that we will, receive, we will not receive $50 in best practices uh, money that we were receiving in 14-15. Uh, overall, the 15-16 School Aid Act will result in the district funding uh, to be decreased by almost $1 million. Um, and just going over this, the increase of $140 per pupil is based on 11,604 students, so that's a decrease of $1.6 million, or I'm sorry, increase of $1.6 million, uh, decrease of 276 FTE based on 2014-15 funding of 72.51 is a $2 million decrease. Elimination of best practice funding is a $600,000 decrease. Uh, and if you're looking at, basically, we're going from the amended budget of about $103 million to $104 million. The increase is due to MIPSR's funding, which will increase by $181 per pupil. It's important to note this funding is an in and an out. Whatever we receive, we're sending back. So it's not money into the district. Um, our 14-15 amount was $5.9 million versus a projected $8 million for 15-16. Um, the amount that we receive is based on our payroll from 14-15. And our payroll will decrease slightly in 15-16. Uh, this, what the district has to do is we have to fund the first 25.78%. 
and then the state through 147C will make up the difference between the rate of, um, well, this year, 3341. Next year's stated rate in the budget is 3631. Uh, it's important to note that this actually ranges from a low of 3592 to a high of 3788. And that's because it depends on the retirement plan that individual uh, participates in. Primarily, the uh, employees that have been here for a while are at the 3788, so most of our staff is at that. New teachers after, or staff after 2010 would primarily be at a lower rate than that. Um, our special education, uh, I'm sorry, I should have said go to page six so you can see some detail. Um, our funding uh, is going to be based on the pre-adjustment 2014-15 of $8.6 million. Now there's always the possibility that we'll get a, an adjustment mid-year, positive or negative. The last couple years it's actually been negative. Um, and then operating transfers in uh, in 2015-16 will only be food service of 300000 because, as I mentioned before, the capital projects fund was eliminated. That was $400,000 last year that we transferred in. And then on uh, page 5, our uh, budget uh, expenditure assumptions uh, salaries are based on current staffing less a reduction of 11 teaching staff uh, replacement of retirees or resignations may result in adjustments uh, once actual staffing is known and calculated for the January amendment uh, MIPSERS rates were discussed above uh, next year's rate stated rate 3631 high rate 3788 uh, medical insurance is based on the state published rates because we're on a hard cap of uh, 5,992.30 for a single policy, 12,531.75 for a one plus one, and 16,342.66 for a family. Uh, these rates re represent a uh, increase of approximately 3% over the 14-15 re rates. Uh, but I'm happy to report that our MESA rates only increased 2.2%. Uh, this is important to note that uh, the district funds up to the published state rate. So uh, the difference between that rate and our premium, we actually contribute to the employees in a health savings account because we're on a high deductible plan. Uh, single would pay up to $1,300, family up to $2,600. Um, for 15-16, our health savings uh, contribution will actually increase. Um, not a large amount, but about $20. W when we were negotiating, we expected that to possibly go down, but due to MESA rates at 2.2, we're able to actually increase this uh, for non-teaching, a single contribution will be 657.25 for one plus one in family, 1,124.97. And for teaching, uh, it would be 763.49 for a single and 1,518.94 for one plus one in family. Um, so again, we're able to contribute to the employees to offset the cost of the deduction. Uh, utility costs are based on current year, 1415 actual, with the reduction for our demolished buildings. That represents about $150,000 decrease overall in electric, water, sewer, and gas. Uh, diesel and gas is reduced based on cost reductions. Um, our May 1, 14 diesel cost was 328 per gallon. Our May 115 cost is 182 per gallon. Significant decrease when you think we spend over $600,000 for gas and diesel 
will be budgeting about 400,000 in the next year. Jim? Mr. President, I, I don't <clears throat> I have a question. Can I ask it now, or do you want to let, wait till the entire presentation and come back and ask, since this is a budget here? I think that this is involved enough that we should bend our rule a little bit and ask our questions when we can. Okay. If, if, I, if I, that's okay with you. Yeah, I have. Fine. The question I have uh, was the step increases were eliminated with the exception of local four and, and yes. WISA, okay? Mm -hmm. Is that something that we discussed with those units? Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. And, uh, um, no, that's something that we negotiated. Those units, okay. um, when we negotiated, people were given an option okay. of uh, what they wanted to okay. reduce. And, you know, the overall is to decrease by 5% wages okay. and go to a hard cap. Um, local four. Transportation gave up vacation buyback, which was okay. over $350,000 $350, per year. So those units bought their steps. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the answer. I have a question about transportation. Okay. Do we have any more buses that run on propane, or are they all gasoline or diesel? We have no propane. Okay. I just have one quick question about the utilities, about the... Um, abandoned or the the lots that we don't have schools there anymore do we have to pay for like the electricity for the lighting of the property because i know some school districts have to pay for the lighting yes yes we lights. actually pay a per pole charge per pole charge yeah okay okay uh if you could turn to page um 12. Uh, page 12 is just a detail of uh, insurance, retirement, FICA, workers' comp, basically all the benefit areas. Uh, you can see our um, insurances went up minimal. Um, the increase in retirement due to the rate increase. And FICA is about the same because our um, salaries will be flat to lower. Um, and workers' compensation is based on historical, and other is historical also. Uh, down below, you can see that the amounts above include the uh, 147C retirement um, contribution from the state. On page 16, this is the FTE calculation. Um, you know, as I stated, that. We originally started with a 286 FTE reduction when we started budgeting, and that's what we're staffing to, I believe. Yes. And uh, but for funding purposes, what what we were doing last year is we would take 90 percent of the fall count, 10 percent of the spring count, and then you would come up to a to an FTE amount. That's changed to go from a 10 percent in the previous winter count to a 90% in the fall. So that provides some stability, and historically the district decreases from the fall count to a spring count, so that adds about 10 students, 10 FTEs, or about $74,000. Mr. President, I, I, wanna, I just want to go back and ask one question in relation to my other question on pages uh, uh, 14 and 15, when we get to the basic programs uh, for teachers and then on 15 for uh, custodial maintenance, I'm assuming, uh, or transportation, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that those two steps are built into the increase. That's, been, that's what they bargained and gave up other things for. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's all I need to know. Thank you. Okay. Um, then, again, as in the amendment, you have the other funds, um, you have the debt fund, um, federal, state, local grants, special education, uh, milk and lunch, and sinking fund. And again, the capital or five-year maintenance fund is no longer a fund in the district. Do you have any questions? I'd be happy to answer. You've ended your presentation? Uh, I'm I'm done. Yes. I move that we support a motion from the Mrs. Operation. Walker. Support. And support from Mrs. Madison. Discussion. Um, 
I still have my question about the 147D, but I will hold off on that. So uh, we're on the, we're on B, the budget hearing now. Correct? Yes. Okay. Fine. Okay. No so, is there anything else from the board? Mrs. Mattel. Okay. Mrs. Hines. Yes. Mr. Griffin. Yes. Mrs. Madison. Yes. Mrs. Walker. Yes. Dr. Weaver. Yes. I vote yes, and Mr. Buckaloo. I also vote yes, and we have a 7-0 vote. And that brings us to item C, Mr. Larson Scheider. Okay, thank you, Mr. President. Um, you have a resolution uh, adopting the appropriations for 1516. Uh, you have a um, summary of what I've gone through. I don't know if you want me to go through, but the general fund and all other funds are contained within the resolution um, to appropriate for next year. We have a motion. I move that we support the resolution. Support. support. Uh, motion from Mrs. Walker and second from Mrs. Madison. Any discussion? Yes. Yes, sir. I, I just want to make an overall statement. I could, uh, you know, when you look at uh, the kind of funding level that we have, the lowest of 300 districts because of, quote, Headley not passing years ago, I won't go into that, but that's the cause, eight mills that went down. I, I look at, uh, and I think the public should be aware that when you look around and see the kinds of districts that are in financial trouble or because they didn't make the kinds of cuts that are necessary that past boards, I'm going to give them credit and past administration, uh, took the time to do with a lot of stress and a lot of uh, a lot of people saying it was the wrong thing to do. But I look at a lot of districts today that are having to make those cuts because they haven't downsized for where they should. And and I say all of this for this reason only. And you look at our city; it's not in deficit. It made the cut. You look at our school district; we're not in deficit. We don't have an emergency manager. We don't have people coming in here and cutting our employees from what they have. Admittedly, we need to pay them better. And if, in fact, we get the money, I'm sure this board will do just that. But you know what? It creates a stability in our community where people can move in and buy homes and be confident that the school system is going to deliver a kind of program that they can deliver. We'd like to deliver it even more so, and we get the money we will. But stability is important to a community. And the schools, people move into a community for one reason. They look at the schools first and the city services second. And I have to say, as a member of this board, they've made the tough decisions. And the administration we hired has made the tough decisions to keep this board, uh, this district, in a situation where people can move in and be assured that their children are going to get a, an education that outlined in this budget, and not cut, and not cut. I mean, we're doing the kind of budgeting with the super, new superintendent, Dr. Mollis, is necessary to get us back to where we should be and keep us there. But stability in a community is vitally important for a school system so that we have people that will move in and the people will stay here and not move out and keep their kids here because our funding, and the public should know this, is based on how many students we have. Now, admittedly, we're having a decrease in people that have children, and it's decreased tremendously, 10%, I noticed, in Troy in the last five years. So we're, we're facing the same <coughs> thing. People don't have three to five children. They have more like two, 2.7, I think, the last time I read. So I just think the public should be aware that this school board has made the tough decisions and past school boards, and this administration has, has been... Uh, Council by this board that we are not going to have an emergency manager and we are going to live within our means and we're going to deliver the programs we can with the money we have. And you can be assured that that's going to happen when your kids go to the school system. So stability is here and we have a good administration to administer those kinds of successful programs. So uh, I'm going to support this budget tonight because of that. And if it were a budget that would uh, not uh, be in, would be in deficit and support emergency, I wouldn't do it. I can tell you right now, as a member of the Finance Committee, I didn't say much during the discussion because I went through all this in the Finance Committee meeting. But, you know, we're living within our means. That's what we should do. We're going to deliver a budget and a program within our means 
And that's, I think, a real credit to this board and this administration, and I thank you. Anyone else have a comment <coughs> or question? Mr. President, <clears throat> I guess my comment would be a little bit, a um, little bit different than Mr. Griffin, although I agree with the things that he said. When, when you serve on a board a long time, uh, you remember conversations. And one of the conversations that this board had was that we did not want our fund equity under 5%. Unfortunately, that was never voted on. Um, but I remember the night that we told our superintendent at that time that those were the numbers, that we wanted to do that. Um, I am uh, very much concerned about um, letting that number drop. I'm going to vote for this budget tonight, obviously, but um, I just wanted to express my concern that, um, that we need to be looking into ways that we can um, affect our budget even more than we have. Uh, these fund equities are important, and, um, and so um, that's my comment right now. Thank you. And is there someone else? And I would like to say that I do agree with, with uh, our two speakers this evening. No question about it. The fund equity is, is too low. I think it covers about two weeks of operation. Mm -hmm. And that's not nearly enough. And the state is going to take notice of that. Uh, our support staff, our teachers, our administrative staff have made tremendous sacrifices to, to put us in a position that allows us to maintain programs. We couldn't be more better served by our employees than <laughs> we're being served right now. The issue isn't that we aren't doing enough. The issue is that we aren't receiving enough revenue. Each year, I get angry when I look at the school aid fund and I see money diverted to things like a tax break for industry mm -hmm. or a shell game that takes money out of the school aid fund, slips it into the general fund so that there's money to take care of higher education, which was never a part of the K-12 school aid fund. Um, and we're not talking about a few dollars. We're talking about anywhere from from a half a billion dollars up to close up close to a billion dollars each time that this happens. And of course, it isn't just us; it's school districts across the straight state. I, I heard a comment uh, tonight that there are something like 300 school districts in the state that are at the the level of lowest funding. How did that happen? Have we been, as school districts and school boards across the state, that negligent? You know, I don't hardly think that, that the problem is with school boards. The problem is with the allocation of resources. And it isn't the question of having the resources. The funds are there. They're being, def uh, they're being sent in other directions and denied public education. And this is a problem that should anger anyone involved in public education. It should anger parents as well. We deserve better from our state government. And uh, thank you for letting me vent. Are there any other comments? Mrs. Medell? Okay. Dr. Weaver? Yes. Mrs. Hines? Yes. Mrs. Walker? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mrs. Madison? Yes. I vote yes, and Mr. Buckaloo? I also vote yes, and that gives us a 7-0 seven seven. vote. It also brings us to item 295.15, superintendent's report, Dr. Hermel. Thank you, President Buckaloo, and good evening. I have three things that I want to share with the board and our community tonight. Uh, the first is that summer school started this week and is going strong. Our smart summer education camp, which serves our kindergarten through grade four students, will run through July 30th. And that started this week. We have 286 students enrolled currently in that program. 
Our MARS summer education camp, which serves our fifth grade through seventh grade students, will also run through Ju uh, July 30th. I hope I didn't say June 30th on the previous, July 30th. Um, and we have 124 students enrolled in that program. And we had 100 families attend the open houses on Monday evening. So lots of participation and uh, great numbers of enrollments. Also, our priority summer schools are going strong for K-4. And they're at Hamilton, Hicks, Hoover, and Schweitzer. So we're excited to serve our students and to help them continue to learn through the summer months. The second item I want to talk about um, is aligned very much with the comments from Trustee uh, Griffin and Weaver and uh, President Buckaloo in regards to early warning legislation. And uh, currently, that package of bills has been making its way through the legislative process. Some amendments and revisions have been uh, made in the last uh, few weeks as those have progressed. Uh, but they still include many of the components we've discussed in the past, such as a required percentage of fund balance, emergency managers, submission of budget assumptions, and other various reports. Currently, one of those bills, and it's a package of those bills, but if it's enacted, it would require school districts as well as public school academies, so there is a level playing field here, to submit our budgetary assumptions annually when adopting our budget. And you saw in Mr. Larson Scheidler's um, uh, budget for 15-16, both the revenue assumptions and the expenditure assumptions. Those would have to be submitted to the Center for Educational Performance and Information, which is called CEPI in our world, um, and we would be providing those, and they would likely have to be submitted by July 7th of each year. Um, and the district would also have to have a general fund balance of approximately 5% or higher in order to be exempt from some of the requirements of that legislation. And the general fund balance of 5% or greater would have to be in the two most recent fiscal years. And the state's review of that particular um, fund balance is to say that you are not a district in financial distress. So your points tonight are very well taken, and we need to consider those as a district, and I think we take them very seriously. So there would be requirements in the package of required uh, budgetary information that would go to the state superintendent of public instruction as well as uh, the treasurer the state treasurer, so they would have the ability to determine whether there would be a cause for identifying a district in financial distress. I am at least currently pleased that the revision of the package includes input from our uh, new soon-to-be-in-place superintendent of public instruction, where previously it was only the uh, management um, and treasury, budget and management treasury. So uh, school districts would have to be paying attention to this. There is some thought that when the legislature convenes next week on the 30th of June for one of their added sessions that they may take up this bill and actually pass it and send it along to the governor for signature. So I'll be watching that for you. Um, at this point, and as you heard in our budget section, our fund balance for next year would be approximately $3.3 million or about 3%. And while it's not the 5% that the legislation would require, our work would be enhanced uh, reporting or reporting uh, and monitoring our budget and providing those reports to the state. That would be, in essence, the consequence. We would not be proposing a deficit budget, and we did not propose a definite deficit budget to our board tonight. Wayne Westland has never done that, and we will not do that that keeps us out of the movement toward any emergency managers. There are multiple steps between having to provide reports, which tell them we are monitoring our own, our own situation internally, and getting to the stage of what would be considered an emergency manager. And those uh, steps would include creating deficit elimination plans and enhanced deficit elimination plans, but we as an administration, and I know you as a board, will not be providing to you or our community any deficit budget. So we will continue to work to make sure we are status quo and hopefully improving our situation. And I want you as a board and our community to rest assured that this administrative team and all staff here will continue to give to you de uh, budgets that do not demonstrate a deficit. They may not be huge growth, uh, but they would keep us status quo and we will do what we need to do to make sure that happens. 
The other thing I want to say in regards to our budget is we have to work to ensure that all of our competing needs are met. The services to our students, the retention of our staff, for example, provision of transportation, and many other things that are valuable to making sure everybody gets what they need out of the Wayne Westland Community Schools. We value our employees and we have been working with all of our groups, our employee groups, to make sure they understand our financial <coughs> condition as a district. Um, we meet with them regularly and I'd like to thank um, Kelly Bowl and uh, Jim Larson Scheidler for their work in ensuring our associations are aware of our budgets and we answer all of their questions. We have agreed that I need to send a communication to all of our employees after this uh, board meeting tonight to let them know and to clarify that at this particular time we are unable to change their compensation in any way and unfortunately um, we're unable to change it but I think we need to continue to share with them with transparency and clarity the fact that we are not able to do anything different despite our best desires and efforts in doing so. Um, we also need to share with them and I've included in an email that I will send to them that we plan to continue to work together through careful analysis and collaboration of all of our competing needs and to create and develop a strategic plan over the next year and the board will be assisting in that work as part of its uh, role as well to guide our focus and our effort to ensure that we are financially and educationally prudent in all that we do. I just think the transparency of communication with our staff um, is absolutely necessary and I want mm -hmm. our board and community to know that. So that's the end of my report. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <coughs> That brings us to 296.15, citizen comments, non-agenda items. Uh, Mrs. Medell? I'm not seeing anything. Seeing none, we'll move on to 297.15, review and recommendations of uh, Board of Education. Uh, Mrs. Madison? No comment. Mr. <coughs> Griffin? No comment. Dr. Weaver? Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, my comment tonight as part of a uh, recommendation um, is that uh, we take a strong look into a policy uh, concerning our uh, teachers and workers, uh, this social media that um, has been talked about for a couple of nights on Channel 7 News um, and um, uh, supported by uh, the Michigan Association of School Boards, that um, we take a look into the social media um, perspective and that um, we look into the lines that could be blurred between teachers and uh, students and that we um, um, do whatever we can to create a policy that would block that in our district. Thank you. That is my comments for tonight. Mrs. Walker. Nothing this evening. Thank you. Mrs. Medell. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I look forward to working with Nancy Ely at uh, Head Start um, and help with the transition into a new program. I see that she comes highly qualified. And I know that they're excited to start working with their new director over there and looking at next school year. Again, it's open enrollment time for Head Start. And normally at a meeting, a, a monthly meeting, I would have a financial report, but this isn't a, a normal um, monthly meeting that already occurred. So therefore, there is no financial report in front of you. But to let everybody know that the enrollment is open for their program. I want to thank Jim, Kelly, and Michelle also for uh, their hard work on this budget because I know it doesn't take just one person. It takes a whole district to put a budget together, even though Mr. Larson Scheidler is responsible for it. <laughs> but it, it does take everybody's input to make sure that needs are being met, especially our students' needs. Uh, the other night, Mrs. Walker and I and Dr. Harmala had a chance to go to the Champions Dinner. It's always inspirational to go to that dinner and listen to the kids' speeches and what they've overcome in life to get to where they are to be successful in 
the program and in their school careers. So again, an excellent job with that program. Uh, Dr. Harmala talked a lot about our summer programs that are going on and uh, one of the things I also wanted to remind people is of our meet up and eat program that we have going at some of our schools and I understand that there's an easier method on our website now to access that information so that you can get to it readily and see where uh, the locations are and times because there is some variances between some of the schools as to whether they offer breakfast and lunch or just a lunch. One of the other things that's going on is our students tomorrow will be um, ending up their JROTC leadership training in Alpena and normally I get a chance to go to that but unfortunately I'm not going to be able to fly my car <laughs> as quickly as I would like to to get there to uh, give them my congratulations from our school board. Um, so I, I apologize to any parent of a uh, cadet who's at camp that I'm not there. Working on this budget, uh, I'm often met in public with people who think that we're getting buckets and buckets full of money, especially when they hear from Governor Snyder say in speeches that he's going to give us, you know, X amount of dollars more per pupil. Yes, we do get that, but unfortunately, what happens is what we're given with one hand, it's taken away in another direction. And vocabulary words are used to help explain it away and all it does is serve to confuse people out there in the public. My own personal philosophy is there's no difference between new monies, old monies, it's all money. And to play games sometimes with the people of Michigan, it does a, a vast injustice to school boards, to students, to school districts who are trying to stay above water level. So please listen very carefully when politicians speak about monies. Do homework and please don't make the assumptions that we just spend money improperly here in a school district because we count every penny and we make sure that every penny is being used wisely in this dis district. And it takes all of us, school board, administration, employees, parents, students, to make sure that it, that is done to the best of our ability. So again, thank you very much for your efforts. Besides. A real quick comment, I'd like to say that I'm really proud of the board, how we all stick together when it comes to issues with the budget and how we all care about our teachers and our students. And I'm, I'm really proud that we're able to stand together and approve this budget. Thank you. Mrs. Bull, thank you for bringing us Mrs. Eli. When you see her next, would you extend our welcome and our congratulations to her? Thank you. And Mr. Larson Scheidler, to you and to your staff, thank you for another outstanding job of getting the numbers together and giving us a, a clear picture of where we are and, and the direction that we're headed. Um, we do know you're just the messenger, and uh, we appreciate the hard work that you do. Thank you. And thank you, Mrs. Harmala, for your presentation tonight, your comments. With that, uh, we go to two sub. Uh, well, where are we through? Two nine eight point one five. A motion to adjourn. So move. Support. Uh, Mr. Griffin and Miss Madison. Was it? Bye. Or Miss Hines. I apologize. <laughs>